Hey guys, it's Brian. We're back in the garage. Today we're going to be working on my brother-in-law Chase's Jeep. This one's going to be a 2019 Rubicon JL, and you've seen this one before. Today we're going to throw a bumper on it and a winch. Let's go take a look, guys. All right, guys, so this is what we're going to be installing today. So this is going to be the stubby bumper from Evo Manufacturing. This thing's pretty sweet. You've probably seen these before. Uh, I've never seen one of these in real life on a JL, so this will be pretty cool. He did go ahead and get the D-ring attachments for the front, which will be nice. And then he also got the license plate and light mount for the front as well. We'll be using that later. And then here's the winch he went with. This is going to be the VR Evo 10S. This is the same one I'm running. I'm pretty happy with it. So we'll uh, definitely put that on. That'll be a good addition. And he did get some stuff from Factor 55, a fair lead and the flat link, just like the one I have. So let's go ahead and we'll remove the Rubicon factory steel bumper and then we'll throw on this new Evo one. Here we go guys. Alright guys, so we're going to pull off this steel Rubicon stock bumper. So what we need to do to start is go ahead and pull off these push tabs on this little beauty plate up here. We'll get that out of the way. And then on the back side here, there's going to be four 18 millimeter bolts. There's going to be two on this side of the frame and there's two on the other side. And then you also have this 16 millimeter bolt here you need to pull off and don't forget to unplug your fog lights and then this whole bumper should pull off this is pretty easy I went over this with my rugged ridge bumper so let's go ahead and we'll pull this off and then we'll show you the Evo one Alright guys, so now that we got that bumper off, we're going to go ahead and, and do the little flip kit on the Rubicon sway bar disconnect. There's uh, similar videos about this online, but basically what you do is you flip your whole motor up and out of the way, and you use a longer bolt or a different size bolt to secure it flipped. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. So that little bolt he's working on is a 15 millimeter. You got to use an open end to get in there. There's not much room for a socket. So once we pull that out, we'll uh, get this guy flipped and throw in that new bolt. All right, guys. So we went ahead and uh, he pulled out this 15 millimeter bolt that goes into here. Now what you're going to do is kind of flip it towards you. And then you're going to remove, remove this bolt right here. That's another 15 millimeter. And then run our new longer bolt through here with a little crush sleeve. To kind of take up the space there for you so yeah it's pretty cool it does save a, a few inches of room here and then we are going to come in with the quarter pounder from evo we do have to come in here and cut these little frame horns so we're going to do that with a little cutoff wheel here in a second An easy mod you can get a bolt for like five bucks and that definitely saves you a ton of ground clearance here so let's go ahead and we'll get that bolt installed all right guys so we're just mocking up the bumper here we're seeing where we need to cut these frame horns at we are going to grab a different bolt for the flip for the sway bar disconnect module so we're just kind of buttoning it up we're going to see right about where it's hitting here so it looks like we need to make our cut on these middle sets of holes here so we're going to go ahead and mark that with a paint pen and then we're going to come in with the cutoff wheel and get that cut so we can make some clearance for this and then we'll uh, finish wrapping it up tomorrow all right, here we go. All right, guys. So we're going to go ahead and kind of mock up about where we're going to cut it. We might need to go a little higher than that and up at an angle a little bit, but that should be okay. We might pull off the sway bar brackets here to get behind here with the grinder. We'll see what the clearance is looking like. We might just uh, use a sawzall as well. So let's go ahead and we'll get the bumper back off, and then we'll go ahead and work on cutting off these frame horns. All right, guys, we mark where we're going to cut. Here we go. Guys, and another modification you do have to make for this quarter pounder bumper from Evo is you do have to go ahead and open up this hole right here. This is going to be the driver's side top right here. And what we're going to do is we're going to use a step bit and we're going to open that up to a half inch. So we're going to do that now. All right, guys. So it turns out you do need to go ahead and wallow out that hole or open it up to a half inch on this side as well. 
We went ahead and test fitted with the bolt that's going to retain the bumper. If it's fine in all the other holes, this one just needs to get opened up a little bit. So we'll do the same thing on this side. That way we can get our hardware through here. Alright guys, we went ahead and cut off the passenger side, cleaned it up with the flap wheel. Looks pretty good. We're going to do the same on the driver's side now, and then we should be able to get our bumper on. Alright guys, we're just going to touch it up with some black paint here where we grinded. This is how it turned out. It looks pretty good. Alright guys, so round two on the flip kit, we ended up having to get a different bolt. So we originally started out with this one where it is shouldered. We didn't have enough threads at the end here. We still needed like another quarter to a half inch of threads. So we went and got us a, a full threaded one here. This will work out a lot better. This is going to be an M10-150-100 bolt. So we'll go ahead and we'll use this. That way we can set the depth and we can get it a little farther up into the module so we can get these two clamshells uh, securely together. So let's go ahead and flip this real quick and then we can get the bumper on. Here we go. All right, guys, this is what it's going to look like flipped. You do save quite a few inches having this flipped up before it was down about here. So definitely gain some clearance. This is a pretty easy install. You just gotta get that bolt, bolt it in, do a little jam nut and then a sleeve. And then now it's fully secure and it's not going anywhere. And it's tucked up out of the way. We've got our frame horns cut on both sides. So let's go ahead and start putting the bumper on. All right guys, so for the JL version of the Quarter Pounder Evo bumper, you do need three of these spacer plates. So we're gonna flip the bolts around this way to help us get the bumper on. And then once we do the final install, we'll flip them around the correct way. He does have the D-ring mounts as well, so we'll need to install those at this time. All right, here we go. All right, guys, we got her on there. A little bit of a juggle. It definitely takes two people, but it wasn't too bad. So you are going to need an Allen key. This one's going to be a 3 8 and then you're also going to need a 19 millimeter and we did use about a foot long extension, reach in from the side here and get on those nuts. But it wasn't too hard. We got them on, you're gonna to torque those to 80 foot pounds. We're gonna go ahead and put the fair lead on and then get his winch installed. All right, here we go. All right guys, that's what it's gonna look like with the fair lead installed. This is gonna be the Factor 55, it's the one inch one. It's pretty easy. We did have to use the offset plate from Evo for the quarter pounder. You wanna put this on the driver's side if you're gonna run a center mounted winch. So we went ahead and got those on. That's gonna be a 19 millimeter here for these, and it's a 16 millimeter here, and then we're gonna use that same 3 8 Allen. So we just went ahead and got that nice and snugged up, and let's go ahead and put the winch in. All right guys, so now we got his worn Evo 10S winch here. We're gonna go ahead and get the mounting hardware ready to install on the bumper. One little trick you wanna do is we've got some RTV. What you're gonna to wanna to do is put it on the nut here. And then if you come look, if you slide it in here where the nut's going to live, you put a little RTV, that'll keep it right where you want it and it won't be sliding around. So you just kind of line up the hole perfect and then that'll keep it from falling out when we lift the winch up into the vehicle. So you get that all lined up. If you don't do that, these have a tendency to slide out on you. It makes it kind of a pain when you're up underneath the bumper. So that's just a little trick for these. And then this is going to be the hardware you want to use the the lock washer and the regular washer and then we're going to use the shorter hardware for this quarter pounder bumper. So let's go ahead and we'll get these all set up and then we'll get it installed in the Jeep. Alright guys, so we went ahead and got the bumper and the winch mounted. We did have to go ahead and unmount the bumper to get to the winch bolts in the back. They are really tight, especially if you have a Rubicon. That motor for the sway bar disconnects just in the way and you can't get to that back right 
bolt there. So we ended up pulling the whole bumper off, getting the winch torque down properly. It's around 30 to 35 foot pounds. And then we put everything back on. Made it a lot easier. So you can tell we were able to do a cleaner job with the wiring. We didn't have to try to force it under there. As we slid it on, we tucked everything. So this ended up being really clean. The wires are hidden. The winch is torqued on there properly. We went ahead and retorqued the um, D-rings here and the main bumper bolts. Those are 80 foot pounds. So now all that's left to do is to run our power and negative wire to the battery, and then we can go tension our winch and we'll be all set. All right, let's go do that. All right guys, so we went ahead and got that wired up. We did kind of run it down underneath here, very similar to what I did on my bumper. We run, ran it up through here, and then kind of up right behind the headlight here. And this is gonna go right underneath the air box. We pass it through that little hole there. And then we come around the back side, we hook up the positive there and the negative there. So let's go ahead, we'll throw our air box back in and we're gonna go test the winch. Here we go. All right guys, so we got everything wired back up, put the air box back in. We went ahead and put his uh, flat link expert back on here. This is the same one I have in the gray. So we went ahead and turned on our Bluetooth controller here and we'll see, uh, see if it works. It looks like it does, so let's just cinch it up a little bit. You want to be real careful right here, you don't want to get your fingers in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to go take my Jeep and we're going to tension his winch line. You always want to do that with a brand new synthetic line winch. What it does is it stretches the cable out a little bit, breaks it in and gets you wound in nice in there. So we'll go do that and then he's all set. All right guys, that's gonna do it for the bumper and winch install on the Rubicon. Guys, go ahead and like and subscribe, stay tuned for more, and leave a comment down below if you have this set up and let me know how you like it. All right guys, we'll see you on the next one.